As in lesson one, we'll get started by generating a new application. Remember that's Rails new and then the name of the app, in this case toy app. And I really do recommend using the exact version. You're welcome to use the version that's in the book, but this is the one that I used in the first lesson, so I'm going to stick with it. As we'll see, in fact, it's already changed. They pushed out a new version of Rails 4.2 beta, it's beta 2, uh, the same day that I cut the first screencast, which is why it's important to use the version at the URL I'm about to show you instead of the one you see in the screencast. So let's go here. So we want to go to toy app gem file dot rails tutorial dot org and this will forward to GitHub. And so you should use this version, whatever you see here. Not not what you see on the screen, what you see at this URL. Um, and so this goes in the gem file. This is just what we did in the previous lesson, same idea. So we're gonna define the gems and then we need to uh, CD into the directory and bundle install and we want to bundle install without production. That just skips these gems here that we don't need locally. It would actually work fine I think if you did that but this is a little cleaner. All right, so this is the kind of thing that absolutely will happen. It says uh, Oh, this is, isn't what I expected. It didn't work. But but don't panic. Just read what it says. It says at the bottom, running bundle update will rebuild your snapshot from scratch. So maybe that'll work. This is what happens when you change a Rails version in the gem file. It's different. It's 4.2.0. beta 2, and we generated this with beta 1. Now we're going to follow the same basic steps that we did in the last lesson, just to, as a way to practice and uh, as, a, as a way to get all this overhead done right at the beginning. So what we're going to do is put this application under version control, we're going to push it up to Bitbucket, and we're going to deploy uh, this early version to Heroku. I'll just make a hello world version for now. So we first initialize the repository, add all of the files, commit it, then we need to make a new repository. So let's go here, go to Bitbucket, and create create it, and just follow the instructions. I have an existing project. We can skip this first line because we're already in the right directory. Just copy this here. push up all of the branches. There's only one, it's just the master branch. And we can skip the tags here in this last line. We don't have any tags. All right, so I've done that push and now I can probably refresh it and see it. Yep, there it works. Source, app, controllers, application controller, etc. So that's good. And let's go here and let's uh, deploy it. Oh, actually, no, let's, uh, let's make it hello. Let's do the hello world. So we make an action and then update the routes and config routes down here. Oops, it's on the right line already. Location controller, hello action. And let's let's run the server. Oops, we need to CD to the directory. The binding IP and the port tell Cloud9 the right place to run things. All right, so it's working there, hello world. And I'm gonna make a commit here. That's so that, uh, oh man, the exclamation point doesn't work. 
this is a this is a, a bash. This bash is the what we're running here. It's a it's a terminal. It's a shell, and the exclamation point refers to some previous event. So uh, this is the kind of little thing that happens. But you can escape it out. You can get rid of it, or you can escape it out with a backslash. There it goes. And now I want to create a new Heroku app. It's a really good idea to deploy early and often. You don't want to deploy at the end of the day and then realize you have all kinds of horrible integration headaches. Let's go here. Oh, no, I'm going to git push. Git push Heroku master, and I'm going to copy this here. So th this won't uh, be anything other than the default right there. Let's take a look at it. There we go, hello world. All right, everything's working, and now we're ready to actually start making this toy app. The main sample application used in the Rails tutorial, which we'll start developing in the next lesson, is a kind of a minimalist clone of Twitter. Uh, but in fact, most of the application is very generic. It just involves things like a, a registration form, login, logout, all of the, the kinds of things that basically any website is going to need. So we'll start in this lesson with just a, a preview, like a prototype of that idea. We'll start with uh, this notion of users who will eventually be able to uh, sign up for the website and log in and so forth. And we'll also introduce this idea of uh, short posts or micro posts, which is based on the idea that Twitter is a micro blog. And in this context, it's a good idea to start planning out what our data model is going to look like.